right, this video is going to show some different scenarios related to draping and cords that students often struggle with and just kind of what we are looking for when we perform those tests. So at this point, you've gown and gloved your surgeon. So your surgeon will go on the other side of the patient and then we're gonna bring up the drapes which are inside the basin here. Now, when you move the basin, there's a couple of things we want to remember. Remember that the basin is only sterile on the top surface, so you should be grabbing the basin like this. You should make sure that you put your hands on the inside. We should never see the thumbs or the fingers around the side. And you also don't want to find yourself like this, where you end up with your back to your back table when you're bringing up the basin. So the basin's over here. If we come behind and approach the area where we are going to be coming up, that will help to prevent some of that. Now you also need to be aware that you may have like a cautery machine or a laparoscopic tower or something that is going to be very close to you as you're bringing this basin up. So we have to watch out for those unsterile areas. I always suggest my students to bring it to the feet instead of to the head because towards the head it usually ends up behind you as you're putting on your square off towels. And there also tends to be a lot of junk kind of up here at the head. So bring it towards the feet. But remember that we have to keep it a safe distance away from things that are unsterile. So 12 to 18 inches. So this is too close. This is going to be a safe distance away from things that are unsterile here. So first off, we're going to start by squaring off the patient. So at this point, we assume the patient has been prepped. We're doing an abdominal case here. So as we square off, remember you want to make sure that your hands are cuffed adequately so that they're going to be protected on the sides. And as we approach, we want to make sure that I'm watching the front of my gown here. So we have all of these unsterile things here where I can't belly up until I get the drape on. So you want to make sure that you kind of stick your butt out, give yourself some extra space here so that you're a safe distance. Now, when I place the square off towel as well, I want to place it and I don't want to take and open it up like this because you see how close my hands are here to things that are unsterile. You simply want to place the towel and then back your hands off, making sure that your fingers aren't sticking out the top. Sometimes I'll see students kind of do this thing where then here's my fingers sticking out the top of the cuff. Well, they're not protected. So make sure that you're backed up so that they're completely covered and they're going to be protected from any contamination. If it still stays folded on the edge, it's not a big deal. We're going to cover it up with another towel anyways. Resist the urge to be OCD and kind of smooth it out because you're probably going to contaminate yourself. Remember also that towels can always be moved away, but they can't ever be brought back towards the incision because then you're bringing something that's unsterile up to a sterile area. So if you're going to touch them to move them back, don't ever stick your hands underneath the towels. We don't ever know how close we are to something that's unsterile. So you're always on top and kind of right here around the incision site and you'll move those back. Then we do the top or the bottom towel. So again, we make the fold away from us. We're going to swing out, cuff the hand, place that. Remember that we have to cover anything that's unsterile. So if I accidentally place to this, and here's the patient's gown sticking out, that's a problem. You shouldn't be able to see anything unsterile on the area where we're gonna be making the incision. So all I would do is simply grab another towel and cover up that area, because once I place a towel, I can't bring it closer to the incision site. If you need, you just grab another towel off your back table, or if you had to ask for something to be open, that would be fine. The final towel has the cuff towards you. This one, you have to be really careful about the front of your gown. Reach across and then place that over there. If I needed to back them up, like I said before, make sure we grab right around the incision site, never sticking our fingers underneath because we don't ever place our hands someplace where we can't see them. Like Casey said, resist the urge. I know you really, I do. I just want to reach over there and straighten that out, but I know that I can't do that without risking a contamination. Absolutely. All right, on my, or on my drape here, as I pick it up out of my basin, you're going to see a picture of a person. So I want the head towards the head, the foot towards the foot. Remember, we talked about stickies on or stickies off, whether your surgeon wants that sticky area around the fenestration exposed or not. If they want the stickies off, remember when you pull the paper off to be cognizant of if that paper flies and touches something that's unsterile, you don't want to bring it then back and then place it someplace because now we're carrying the contamination, okay? So be really aware that if you're taking paper off, you step back so that you're not going to contaminate yourself on something. So now my basin is contaminated, so I would just ask my circulator to go ahead and take that because 
I accidentally contaminated it with that paper. Okay, on these papers too, if you're struggling on an edge, go to the opposite edge, and then you'll be able to pull it off a lot easier. Okay. Also be very aware when you're taking your stickies off because you're, people have a tendency to flop the drape around to see the other side that you're not getting the drape close to your face when you're taking the stickies right. off. So make sure you hold it down here, don't get up here and like you're looking around or you bring it way up by your face or you bring the paper up by your face. So it's always a way when we pull too. Don't ever pull towards yourself this direction or towards something that's unsterile. A way and if you have to drop it on the ground to avoid a, a contamination, sometimes we do have to do that. We try to avoid that, but if you're worried about the contamination. Okay, now this basin, had I not contaminated it and I wanted to save it, I would put my hand inside of it and move it back towards my back table so that it doesn't get contaminated. Okay, so I would put my hand in here, move it back again so it's back by my back table, and then I'm gonna get my drape ready to apply with my surgeon. So we always apply a drape with the fold down, fenestration around the area that I just created with the square off. So I split it in half and hand it to my surgeon. Again, my surgeon and myself are watching the front of our gown and how close we are to these unsterile areas. Since we did expose the sticky, this is when we're gonna stick it down so that it doesn't shift as we apply it to the patient. We then open it up, making sure that we contain all the layers and you're not gonna allow anything to fall down. So I'll let Cindy show you what happens when it falls down or what some people will do, which is just let it fall to the floor. Now this is a problem because when we extend up to anesthesia, they're gonna pick it up and bring it back up to a sterile level. So it's better to hang on to it and just apply it. Rewind. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's what's not to do, right? <laughs> okay. So when we extend the drape, we usually go to the foot first. So we grab the top layer, cuff our hand to the inside so it's protected from contamination extend out making sure that we're not going to follow the drape down so we just allow it to drop don't go down with it and also you're not kind of making waves and causing air currents and those kinds of things okay this drape happens to have arm board covers on it so my patient's arms could be out on the side something like this we want to make sure we open those up again we're going to cuff our hand and extend up to anesthesia and wait for anesthesia to attach it to the IV holes this is not what you want to do before we allow it to fall yes the thing is, is that anesthesia a lot of times does not look. They just start grabbing at the drapes. And so if Cindy is like this, and here I am anesthesia, I'm gonna contaminate her. So you really wanna make sure that hand is protected by cuffing it inside the drapes. That way if they do touch you, then you're gonna be protected from contamination. And then they will take, and they're going to attach it to the drapes, or the drape to the IV pulls at the head of the patient. Okay. So if you did get your hand contaminated up there, you're gonna have two pairs of gloves on. You could take off your outer pair of gloves and get a new one, which again is another reason why we wear two pairs of gloves to correct those contaminations. Okay, now as we extend it, if we had not removed the adhesive, we kind of need to place a hand here, which will help to prevent the shifting of the drape. Once it's stuck down, it's gonna be a lot less likely to do that. But also if your drape ended up where it was shifted over to the side, you know, say like this, where I couldn't see my incision site. We can't just pick the drape up and shift it because then I'm bringing something that's unsterile up to a sterile level. So if I needed to, I could just cut out that section in order to give me access to where I'm going to be making the incision. All right, once you get your drape on, go ahead. Oh, were you gonna say no, something? No, All right, no. once you get the drape on, then you're gonna bring in the Mayo stand. So again, I know it appears that we have to turn our back to one of these fields simply because of where they're located, but you kind of step away from the field and once you know you're far enough away that you're not gonna contaminate, then you have to turn and face your other field. It's just kind of how some rooms are set up. But as we approach the field, I don't wanna be backing up like this to where I know a sterile field is. So what you wanna do instead is get behind the mayo stand and push it so that you know where you're going. So get behind the sterile field. Always keep the sterile field in your view. Now, when we move the mayo, you can grab it from behind and push it. Or if you were over here, when we were just talking about moving the mayo stand, you can grab it from the front as well. But if you're approaching a field, you definitely wanna make sure that you can see it in your field of view. Now. In the Mayo stand video, we talked about making sure that the Mayo cover was pulled down before you approach the field. So again, double check, make sure that this Mayo cover didn't stop something like up here when you put it on. 
because then when I come up to the field, if I haven't had that pulled down, now I have this unsterile area up here at a sterile field, which is going to be a problem. So we make sure that's pulled down before we pull the mayo stand in. Remember that the mayo raises simply by just lifting up on it. Sometimes you do have to put a foot down here to kind of brace yourself against it, but you do not have to step on the button in order to raise that mayo stand. We just step on the button to be able to lower the mayo stand. So we push the mayo in. You're always gonna put a hand underneath to make sure that it's not resting on the patient. We, we don't wanna give them a pressure injury. You're gonna hand your light handles to your surgeon if we had lights, they would put them up, but that helps to kind of keep them busy. And then we're gonna attach the cords to the field. So we always start with cautery because that's gonna be the first thing that the surgeon uses after they make the initial incision with the knife. On your back table, you've prepared it with the amount that we need to keep on the field, the end that we're gonna to toss off, and then a non-perf towel clip to attach it to the drapes. We attach the cautery on the surgeon's side of the field to their dominant hand. You're gonna know which hand is their dominant hand by which hand you glove first when you glove them at the back table. All right, when we attach the cautery, we wanna have the non-perf towel clip on the side that is outside where they're gonna be working and it needs to be kind of pointed down so it's not gonna get all wrapped up inside the cord as they're working throughout the case. If I put it on this side, then she's probably gonna get the cautery pencil caught on it, it hits her hand, you know, gets in the way throughout the case. Now remember, you want the cautery holster to actually act like a holster. You don't wanna hook it up up here, but you also don't want it too far down where now it's gonna be unsterile. So kind of right up here by the fenestration where the surgeon's gonna stand, and you simply just put the non-perf towel clip through the hole in the holster, Make sure that you don't clamp the cord because that breaks down the insulation and somebody can get shocked by the electric current. You also want to make sure that you attach this before you toss it off. Because if you toss it off first and then you're messing around with it up here, you're probably gonna bring something back up onto the field. You can kind of double check and make sure that you have enough length to get to your incision site up here. And then always double check before you throw it off to make sure which side your machine is on. So over here we have the cautery machine. So I want to make sure that I toss my cord off this direction and then my circulating nurse will plug it in. Now, when you toss it off, not, not so likely to happen on this side, but definitely over here, a lot of times I'll see students kind of do this thing where the hand drops or they're reaching behind themselves to throw off cords. So make sure that you keep the hand at the level, the sterile field level, and then just allow that cord to drop there. Suction, you also will have prepared on the back table and then have it up here on the mayo. So you've added a tip and then a non-perf towel clip as well. So again, I wanna look and make sure where my suction canister is. For our purposes today, we'll just say it's on this side over here by me. And I, it really doesn't matter to me if you hook up the suction above or below the incision site. It will really just depend on where it's best for whoever's gonna be utilizing it throughout the case. Okay, so, on some drapes, you're gonna have these little flaps that look like this. You also might have some Velcro, and you also have a non-perf towel clip that you can use. Some way that it's gonna be secured to the drapes. So if you have these little flaps, what you can do is just take them and flap it over, and then just clip at the base. And that will help to prevent that from sliding, because what we don't want is to have changing of levels of that tube. So once I attach it and toss it off, I want that on sterile section to stay below a sterile field. So if I was gonna use this, now if I'm up here at the head though, remember what's underneath here is the patient's face. So don't be resting things on the patient's face or accidentally clip their nose. Make sure that you're paying attention to that. And then when I toss this off, I'm just gonna drop it. Now, if I did not have one of these flaps, I could simply just take the drape itself wrap it up around the suction tubing, and then just clip it with the non-perf towel clip again up here. If you have the Velcro, you can simply just use the Velcro and you don't necessarily have to use the non-perforating towel clip. Okay, if it falls too low, you can't just pull it back up onto the field, okay? If you need to get a new suction tubing, you would do that. Um, sometimes we can also cut a section of it off if that fell below the sterile field too, if we still had enough length up on the field to be able to utilize during the case. All right, that's about it.